Welcome to worship at Celebration Community Church on this first Sunday after Epiphany. I miss being with you last week, but because of you two, I was able to worship with you. Today, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, so you might want to get a small container of water along with your communion, bread, and wine, and at the end of the service, we will have a moment when we will renew our baptismal vows. This week has been troubling and shocking as we watched a group make an assault on our Capitol in Washington, D.C. It was difficult to watch, and yet we could not tear our eyes away from the television screen. We want to continue to pray for our country, for our leaders, for President-elect Biden. We are a country divided, and we pray for unity and peace. Today is also Anniversary Sunday at Celebration. We celebrate our 28th anniversary as a church. We give thanks for those faithful folk who went before us and stepped out on faith to begin this church. Even in times of pain and sadness, God is with us, and we remember that this is the day the Lord has made. We will be glad in it. Lift up your hearts. Hey, church family. Hello. I miss every one of you. I love you. I look forward to seeing you again. I pray that each and every one of you are healthy and safe. Be good. Happy anniversary. I look forward to handing you a bulletin soon. I love Celebration Community Church because we are such a diverse group of friends that truly love one another through thick and thin. Celebration is home to some of the most compassionate, talented, generous, genuinely loving people that I have ever met in my life. So proud to call each of you my family. I love and miss you all. Happy anniversary, Celebration. Hello, Celebration family. When we decided to visit Celebration in 2003, we had no idea how our lives were about to change and the lifelong friendships we would gain. Like many of you, we knew Celebration was going to be our church home from the moment we stepped foot in the sanctuary. We've had so many wonderful times with our church family, from those infamous Liz garage sales on Jacksboro Highway, to anniversary celebrations, golf tournaments, Wednesday night gatherings, and of course, our favorite, the Christmas Eve candlelight services. Our church family has also carried us through difficult times with the loss of Pam's mom and dad and my cancer diagnosis. Pam has had the pleasure of serving the church family as business administrator since 2004. We cannot imagine our lives without celebration. Celebration is not really a place, it's a people, God's people in Christ. We so look forward to many more years serving the ministries of celebration with our wonderful church family. We, we love you. you. We first attended Celebration Community Church on All Saints Sunday 15 years ago. We were both moved at how the congregation celebrated the lives of those who had died the year before. The pastor told stories about them that made us feel like we knew them personally. And we came back the following Sunday and we were greeted by Gage Troutman. And as we were leaving, the pastor greeted us by name and welcomed us back. And as we both were walking away, we said, I think we found our church home. The church is well named. It is a place of celebration, of life and love, but it's also a community. And not just the LGBT community, but an active member of the greater community. In church, celebration is a church where everyone is welcome wherever they are in their spiritual life. And all are welcome and invited to participate as they feel comfortable to do. Celebration is a loving, caring, giving, friendly place to be. That's why we call Celebration our church family. And our spiritual home. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday celebration. celebration. We miss you guys. Hello, my name is Carol West and I joined Celebration Community Church in early 1998. If someone were to ask me, what is it that you love about 
celebration, I'd have to answer it in a way that it'd sound almost like a Browning poem. How do I love you? Let me count the ways. I love the people of celebration. Each one of them has a story. They're wonderful people. They're delightful. They're family. They're talented. They're creative. They're loving. I love their ability to have Jesus as their model and the fact that the church follows a social gospel, a social justice gospel. I think it's wonderful that you can take that mix of people from different geographical areas and religions and backgrounds and mix them up and throw them all in a church building and they get along. They worship the same God and they decide not to draw a line in the sand where God did not. I love celebration. God bless celebration. I love you and happy anniversary. Our call to worship. The heavens open, the spirit descends. Jesus emerges from the water and a voice echoes through the blue expanse. This is my child, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus is named, claimed. We come to the water. We remember we are named, claimed. Let us worship God who names and claims us all. Let us pray. God who watches over us, offering us light and hope. Be with us this day as we hear the story of Jesus' baptism. Help us to remember your healing, cleansing, and claiming love for us. Remind us again of the many ways in which you reach out to us. May the image of the waters be for us an image of hope. Bring us closer to you, loving God. Embrace us again with your love. We open our hearts to you this day. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. 
the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. personnel who care for them, for families who stand by and wait. We pray for our country and all who lead us. Please pray with me. God of mercy and grace, with you there are always new beginnings. Our life with and for you is a journey and we thank you for your presence in the low moments and in those times when we soar with the eagles. Your spirit enlivens us and strengthens us for your service and for our life together. Oh God, please give us eyes to see the pain of the world in need, of places that struggle with the stress of war and unrest, the places where a meal and a glass of clean water are a luxury, the places where fear dominates and dialogue is impossible. Oh God, we pray today for our country, which is torn by division. Help us realize that there is so much more that unites us than divides us. We pray for our leaders, give them wisdom and compassion. We pray today for those in our community, our country and the world who struggle with COVID-19. Help us to do what is in our power to keep others safe. We pray today for these in our congregation, Ann Jordan, Bill Jemison, Del Boyette, 
Darlene Pedigo and Julie Poe, Daryl Whitten, Di Sharp, Glenda Gardner, Glenda Kramer, Chief Master Sergeant Hollis Selman, Shannon Mill Selman, Joanne Peters, Joan Bolton, Julia Thieves, Julie Minshew, Marla Morris, Marty Faulkner, Pat Stafford, Prudence Horn, Richard and Tricia Grinalds in the loss of their son, Glendon. God, today we recognize the revelation of Christ's coming, and after any epiphany, there is celebration. But that celebration leads into more opportunities to fight for justice, to offer compassion, and to be salt and light in this your world. Walk with us today, O oh God, and along the way, journey with us and give us eyes to see the wonders of your world. We pray to be transformed by your love and filled with your grace. We pray all of these things in the name of God who came as a child, Jesus the Christ. Amen. A reading from the book of Mark. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of grace.
exactly the year, but I do remember my baptism. Through the years, I have renewed my baptismal vows many times, and one that stands out happened a few years ago when I was in Israel and we went to the Jordan River. The river isn't very wide, and the water was very murky. When I had heard stories of Jesus' baptism as a child, I always envisioned a wide river that was crystal blue. Because we had a group, they let us go down the river a bit where there was a covered area with seats. Our group shared in worship, and we ended by reaching down and dipping our hand in water from the Jordan River and making the sign of the cross on our foreheads. I closed my eyes and I could see John on the shore preaching about repentance with people crowded around him. Those who wanted to be baptized were making a line and there somewhere in the middle stood Jesus. He looked pretty much like the other pilgrims who had come out to the wilderness to hear John preach and to have John baptize them. So Jesus begins his transforming ministry not with a great display of power, but with his willing submission to a human ritual at human hands. He chooses to begin with us in all of our humanness. Now we may not remember our baptisms, but every year we celebrate Jesus' baptism on the Sunday after Epiphany. His baptism is recorded in all three of the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. There is also a reference to it in the Gospel of John. All the accounts are very similar, although Mark's is thought to be the earliest account. Scholars believe that Matthew and Luke both use Mark as one of their sources. Now Mark's account moves quickly and it provides few details. In our text from today, from the Gospel of Mark, there is mention of the heavens opening when Jesus was baptized. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening. More literally, it says, the heavens being torn open. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? The Greek word used here is schizo, the word from which we get our English word scissors and schism, which means to split, to tear apart, to rip open. It sounds violent. The heavens were being split wide open when Jesus was baptized. Usually when God splits open the skies like this, we expect it would mean doom and disaster. God's judgment raining down. The heavens torn open is not usually what we would pray for. Now Mark tells us that many of the people coming out to the wilderness to hear John were there to confess their sins. But Jesus, who comes to the river for baptism, doesn't really need to repent. And yet the heavens are ripped open. Mark understands that in Jesus, God has torn open the heavens and come down to us. Because of that, the baptism of Jesus is a radical act. In Jesus, God enters the world. Now what happens next is that there is a voice and a dove coming from heaven. The voice says, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. This is God's son and there is no judgment, simply divine approval. Now, Jesus didn't have to go be baptized, but he stands with the sinner. His baptism is not the means by which we identify with him, but the means by which he identifies with us. When we are baptized, it means that God has broken through the barrier and come into our lives. And so it is a call to be a part of the remarkable redemptive work of God, to give our lives to something more challenging, Truly saying yes to our baptism is the daily work of the rest of our lives. It is saying yes to the world and yes to a life torn open by the love of God. 
Our baptism is a testimony to the belief that Christ finds us exactly where we are and embraces us in the midst of our questions, our doubts, concerns, and distractions. Now, Jesus doesn't wait until we are clean and perfect. He may not even wait until we are ready. Jesus breaks into the baptism line right beside us. And he breaks into our human lives and claims us in love. Did Jesus, the Son of God, need to be cleansed and baptized? Maybe not. But he cho chooses to enter into that place where all humans find ourselves. That place of brokenness and desperation when we are in need of cleansing and healing. So yes, Jesus comes to meet us where we are in the muck and the mud of life. Jesus says to us, even here, especially here, I am with you. So baptism is not so much about what baptism does to Jesus as it is what Jesus does to baptism. Jesus makes it something new. Barbara Brown Taylor writes this about Jesus' baptism. Why not an eloquent speech or a simple ordination to mark this great passage in Jesus' life? It is as big a mystery as the Christmas mystery of the Incarnation. Why did he become human when he could have stayed with God? Why does he come to us where we are over and over again when he could have saved himself the grief, the pain, and the death? by insisting that we come to him where he is. Because he loves us, that's why. And because he knew that we could never come to where he is without first coming to where we are and identifying with us in our struggles and heartaches. The dove that comes from heaven is the Holy Spirit taking the form of a dove. It is the Spirit that empowers Jesus for his ministry and mission. John says that he baptizes with water, but the one who comes after him will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Water cleanses, but the Spirit does more than that. The Spirit comes to us and transforms us even as it calls us into relationship with one another and with Christ. In baptism, we are called to be a part of God's kingdom right where we are. Jesus tears down the walls between God and us. Christ meets us where we are and claims us as a part of his community of faith, the church. Together, we dare to have faith. We dare to hope. We dare to covenant together and vow to one another to be Christ's body in the world and for each other. We dare to let the Spirit enter into us and among us and through us to transform us into the church. Now at Celebration, we come from many different faith traditions. Some of us were baptized as infants, some as adults, some of us were immersed, some of us were sprinkled, and some of us have never been baptized. What draws us together is the experience of God's love given to us through the Holy Spirit. There never seems to be a command from Jesus that we be baptized, and our coming together as a community of faith does not demand it. Now today is the 28th anniversary of Celebration Community Church. The small group of people who came together 28 years ago felt the moving of the Holy Spirit, drawing them into fellowship with each other at that time, there weren't a lot of churches where members of the LBGTQ community felt welcomed, and yet there was a yearning for a church home. So they began worshiping, worshiping together, and now 28 years later, Celebration is still a vital church and has become a church which welcomes all people. Because of the faithfulness of this community of faith, we have weathered these 10 months with COVID-19, and we are still seeking to make a difference in our community. 
During this pandemic, we have given money and time to help our neighbors in need of food. Fort Worth ISD families, residents at Samaritan House, guests at the Presbyterian Night Shelter, and residents at Park Meadows. In Anne Lamont's book, Traveling Mercy, she tells this story of a child who gets lost one day. She runs up and down the streets of the big city in which she lives, but she can't find a single landmark. She's very frightened. And finally, a policeman stops to help her. He puts her in the police car and they drive around together until she finally sees her church out the window of the police car. She yells at the police officer, stop! And he puts on the brakes. She says, sir, you can let me out now. This is my church and I can always find my way home from here. 28 years ago, a faithful band of believers dared to start something new. They banded together to begin a church that would be a light that shines in the darkness and shows us the way home. Celebration is still faithfully shining its light. Now, the original members were just ordinary folk, not saints, just regular folk who let God's presence in their lives transform them and open their eyes to the need for church. It was God's presence in their lives that gave them the courage to step out in faith. That day when Jesus went out to the wilderness and down to the Jordan River, what he found was just an ordinary muddy river. And the people who came to hear John preach were just ordinary people. And that's exactly the point. When Jesus enters the ordinary, that makes it extraordinary. Jesus jumps right in the muck and the muck, murky waters and makes it new and calls us to be a part of making a difference in the world. On an ABC News special, In the Name of God, the late Peter Jennings interviewed the founder of the Vineyard Christian Fellowship, John Wimber. Wimber said that the first time he went to church, he expected things to happen. He had read some of the stories in the Bible and he just couldn't wait to experience church. After attending three Sundays, he was disappointed and frustrated. Following the service, he talked to an usher and asked him, well, when do they do it? Do what? asked the usher. Well, the stuff, Wimber, Wimber answered. What stuff? the usher asked. Well, the stuff in the Bible. Well, what do you mean? Wimber replied, you know, multiplying loaves and fish, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, giving stuff to the blind, sight to the blind, that stuff. Oh, the usher replied apologetically. We don't do that. We believe in it. And we pray about it, but we don't do it. Now, when you come to celebration, you realize you have found a congregation where the Spirit lives. We don't just pray about it. We don't just believe it. We try to let it make a difference in our lives. Since I have been pastor of celebration, I have found that every time a need is mentioned, you are right there, giving of your time, your resources, and we believe in prayer too. One of my friends visited Celebration and afterwards she said, at Celebration I felt the energy and the presence of the Spirit and that is not true in all churches. Many of our members are willing to let God shake up their routines and change them. Now do we still need to grow? Do we still need to open our eyes to the moving of the Spirit in our midst? Of course, we aren't perfect, but God never gives up on us. And as long as we are still open to growing and learning how to be church together, God can help us continue to learn. It happens to us every Sunday when we share communion. It's just bread and wine. Just ordinary bread and wine. But with Jesus, it becomes extraordinary. 
And that is what Jesus does in all of life. Right in the middle of our anxieties, our ordinary troubled lives that often feel far from the goodness of God, we dare to have faith, to covenant together and promise to one another that we will continue to be Christ's body in the world, that we will continue to be the body of Christ for each other. We open ourselves to the moving of the Spirit, letting her move in us and among us and through us to be a part of God's transforming work in the world. We dare to do this because Christ dares to meet us here. And right here at Celebration is where something new was born 28 years ago. And nothing has been the same since. Thanks be to God. Now is the time in the service when we bring our tithes and offerings to the altar. We thank you, as always, for being so generous, so faithful in your giving to the church. Soon you'll be receiving your pledge card as we enter our pledge season for the coming year. I hope you'll prayerfully consider what you and your family can give. <laughs> So in, on that night, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, 
broken for you. When you eat it, remember me. It is the body of Christ, the bread of life. And then Jesus took the cup in the same way and blessed it and he said, This is my blood which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember. And so we meet at this table. We eat and we drink together. It is the blood of Christ, the cup of grace. Please pray with me. God of life and love, we give you thanks for this bread and this cup, which nourish us as we try to continue to meet you and to learn and to grow into your transforming grace. We give you thanks for your promise to be at this table. We give you thanks for the bread and for the cup. Amen.
And may Almighty God, the heavenly parent of Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, grant us grace in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short. The grace to risk something big for something good. The grace to know that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth. Too small for anything but love. So may God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your eyes and see through them. And may God take your heart and set it on fire through Jesus the Christ. Amen.